vita. Welcome to Issues and Answers, a production of the Government Information Service. I am your host, Jacques Kingston Compton. And today we're talking about gas prices and how they affect the economy, how they affect people's lives, and what in turn affects gas prices. And I'm here with Managing Director of Jean-Marie and Sons. Uh, most of you may know him, Mr. Everestes Jean-Marie. Welcome to the program. Thank you very much. So uh, let's, right. let's, let's just start immediately. I want to know... I mean, from your perspective as a business owner, uh, mm -hmm. a gas station owner, how are gas prices determined? Okay. Um, there are various elements in the buildup of gas prices. Um, perhaps the most important one is the price at which the product lands in the country, which is called the landed price of it. Mm -hmm. And the other elements are the excise tax that the government applies, the wholesaler's margin, which are those wholesaler importer, who are the um, operators who bring the product into the country. Mm. And then you have the retail price, um, the, sorry, the retailers, mm. who are the ones selling the product at the um, various gas stations. Mm. And they have margins as well. So you have the landed price, the excise tax, you have the wholesaler's margin and the retailer's margin. All together makes the retail price of the product at the pumps. So the landed price, how is how is that determined? It's okay. So the landed price and who determines it outside. That's from outside. That's external. And that has we have n absolutely no influence over that, but that is very much influenced by the the price of, of crude oil generally. Um, that's the base product from which refined products uh, are, are derived, which is um, in our case uh, you have um, gasoline, diesel, and LPG, and in some cases, of course, jet fuel, which is less um, pertinent, I suppose, to the average consumer. Um, generally, uh, you, you, one would agree that if the price of crude goes up, those products would in fact go up because it's the base product from which these put, um, refined products are, are built up. But s some of these re refined products are more, um, I suppose, more influenced by changes in the price of crude. Because in the case of gasoline, the base, uh, a barrel of, of, of crude oil would, uh, would uh, account for about 49% of gasoline and 29% of diesel. So you'll get, so the relationship between gas and gas prices and crude prices will be more apparent because there's a greater component of crude oil in the gasoline as opposed to diesel. Um, and then you have from that, the, from the base price of um, crude oil, you have distribution costs, you have transportation costs, you have handlers, you know, all those middlemen involved which build it up. And it's quite a significant part. In fact, it's a greater element of the, um, the, the, the landed cost of the product in St. Lucia. But also I understand that the, the price of crude oil might not necessarily um, get gas prices up or down? Like, can no, for exactly that? for the same reason I, I told you that um, there are bigger elements that could overshadow mm -hmm. um, the price of crude. If, uh, okay, you may have a situation where the price of crude has gone down, but these other factors which account for uh, a significant portion could be going up. So you have crude going down and these other factors like insurance, mm -hmm. transportation, um, distribution, um, become very, uh, go up, the price of the landed price, the price of the product will go up, even when the price of crude is going down. So, I mean, there are, it's a very, there are many variables that play there, mm -hmm. and it's not very obvious what is influencing the price at any one time. But generally, I think it's fair to say that um, if the price of crude is, is going up, the price of refined product will go up. In fact, refine, refiners will take advantage of the fact that if the inputs are going up, they'll bring the price up. Now, um I mean, people would notice that even before the, the Russian-Ukraine conflict, mm -hmm. gas prices were going up, like let's say during COVID. Mm -hmm. Why, well, both, that's a two-part question. Why was it going up during the COVID era? And why, what factors affect the price of it during wartime? Okay, 
So what we have, as we were coming out of COVID, you had an increase in general activity, economic activity globally. And the big driver of economic is energy costs. I mean, that's a big component. So the demand for oil and uh, energy goes up. So it's a case of economics. The demand is going up. I mean, and when the supply is not catching up, the price will go up. Um, what has happened with the Ukraine um, conflict is that you've had Russia as a major player is being squeezed out. Um, and, and so you have the supply being cons constrained. And of course, you, 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 the consequence of that is the prices are going up. And then you have the, the fear of the uncertainty that um, dealers have. I mean, I'm talking about people who are trading in, in oil uh, of, of worst case scenarios and people are buying stuff or trying to store stuff and which is driving the prices up. Where do we get our, our crude well, oil gas from? Years ago, we used to get the, our product from Trinidad, but that has stopped. Surprisingly, I think that's coming out of the US because Trinidad doesn't have a refinery um, to, to, do, um, to refine crude. So that product comes from the US, um, which the Shell and Sol are able to bring into St. Lucia. Is there any particular, any specific part of the US or? Um, I am not sure exactly where, but um, I suspect somewhere along the East Coast they may be getting the product from, I'm not sure. Okay, but um, so it, it's mainly from the US, is there's yeah. no percentage of it? Okay, I, I yeah. see, that's, yeah. that's, um, that's actually pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. um, what else I have to ask is, um, do, you, do you find that people understand that you as the gas station owner, you don't, you don't set the prices, or do you get a lot of people coming to you and say, what, <laughs> why, well, why is my gas so high? Why does it cost $40, $50 more yeah. now for me to fill up? I mean, I, I still find it rather strange that even now, I mean, enough discussion hasn't taken place around gas prices that still many people don't quite understand that um, even when prices are going up, that it has nothing to do with the dealer. Mm -hmm. But then again, I could understand um, from the point of the consumer that when you're paying more money, you're paying it to the gas station the operator and the perception is they're getting it. Um, but what people are not seeing is the back end of this, that the dealer is paying more for the product now. And his margin doesn't change in terms of dollar value. Um, he still gets his dollar ten per, per, per gallon, but he is paying more. And in fact, when the price of product goes up, it is bad news for retailers, surprisingly. It's bad news because right what happens is less things. people buying well the demand drops mm -hmm. because your 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 your, your profit um, or your revenue is a, is a function of two things the um, your margin what you make on the dollar and how much cash you sell um, and when prices go up people consume less so you sell less mm -hmm. and of course your your margin is well while it remains at a dollar you have to put out more money than before to get that dollar mm -hmm. so if you used to pay fifteen dollars for a gallon of gas now you have to pay sixteen dollars to get that same dollar so in terms of percentage terms, you know, your margins drop. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not something you want to do because the, the consequences of that is you, when, you, when you buy products, I mean, a truckload of gas like, could cost you $85,000 in one go. I, I want to just stop you there for a second. We're actually due for our first break. Mm -hmm. Okay. You're watching Issues and Answers. Please stay tuned. We'll be back in a moment. Tout moun say counseling, counseling, counseling. Kite mou do bagay chance. Depuis moi fait, PS moun pa jamais comme ça. Mon Iglesia, just yesterday you asked me advice about your husband, and we spent over an hour on the cell. Ça c'est counseling? Mon quoi c'est ça fait moun? Just think about it, Iglesia. When you have a difficulty with someone, you ask your friends for advice to help you to deal with your problems. But wouldn't you prefer getting advice from a professional counselor? Huh. I hope you're not one of those who think counseling is for crazy people. Mm. Mwen yon situation ki bien we. Ek mwen bwizwen professional counseling. Me mani la jan. Ishe akonisyon doctor's visit. Eh, eh, eh. Don't you know the Ministry of the Public Service has an employee assistance program they call the EAP, which is offering six free counseling sessions for government employees? Iglesia, why don't you take advantage of it? Really? It's free. Lend me your phone, let me call the EAP unit, ASAP. Because I want professional, did you say free? Free counseling. Boy, glass of water, who is the counseling, sir? Call the EAP unit at 468-2269. EAP works, let it work for you. 
Welcome back to Issues and Answers. I'm your host, Jack Kingston Compton, and we're talking gas prices with Managing Director of Jomari and Sons, Mr. Everestus Jomari. Uh, yeah, so before the break, you were talking about how um, the price of gas can affect your profit yeah. margin. Yeah, I was making the point that um, it's, it's not a good thing for dealers. In fact, dealers would rather if the prices didn't go up uh, because, because when it does go up, um, the amount of money you have to that's tied up in the ground in stock, the value of that goes up. And invariably you have to go, you know, find additional working capital to keep the business going because you're tying up money there and it affects your overdraft and your cost of running the business. So contrary to what people believe, mm -hmm. when the price of fuel goes up, this is bad news for retailers. And, and as you mentioned before, um, people buy less gas. People buy less when gas. The, when, the, when the energy goes up. Correct. But I, I guess, funny enough, because we're in a, a tropical country, we don't have it as bad as some, that, let's say, somewhere like the U.S. or the U.K. Like that has winter. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Heating costs, and, yeah. 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 Um, so who are your customers? When prices go up, who does that affect? Are we talking about? Because you have persons who, I guess, drivers. Mm -hmm. You have um, persons who buy your, your LPG tanks. Well, I think the, the people who hurt... Um, <laughs> Quite badly, I have to say, is um, minibus operators, yeah, because it's the single largest cost of the operations mm -hmm. fuel, and they are more or less constrained <laughs> by the fact that they could only charge so much for their fares. Their fares are are, are regulated, mm -hmm. so you have a regulated fare which you cannot depart from, and your costs are driving up significantly and squeezing your margins. And in some cases, could make the whole business unprofitable. Um, and I think that's one of the biggest challenges that. Um, this sector faces that costs the cost of fuel, which is a significant part of the operations. Um, they have no control of it, and it keeps going up and squeezes their margin to the point where it's um, the business is not viable. Mm. Probably some of them are thinking, is it even worth it to? Yeah, to and I know us? that. And um, <coughs> in fact, that was particularly so just after, still, you know, in the latter part of the the, the, the COVID period there, where you still were restrictions, so you couldn't even put. You couldn't have a full load of people, so you had your costs going up. You can't get the, the mm -hmm. price, the, the, um, the fare up, and you have fewer people on the bus. So, I mean, and I think many people just packed up, took a holiday, uh, because it's just not viable. Because you have heard their, their complaints. Um, I guess most people have heard their complaints. Mm -hmm. uh, but you mentioned that it, the price is regulated. Is it, is it possible, is it a case where they would have to dialogue with the state? Or the yeah, um, or? that's the thing which, um, like in the same way like um, dealers have to, um, from time to time, we've got to sit down at the table and speak to the Ministry of Commerce and make a case for an increase in margins. And I think they have been doing that um, with the Ministry of Transport. And I think, if not this month, I think, um, July, you may see an increase in bus fares. Yes, that actually, yeah, I, think from, I think from quite possibly next week. Okay. Um, do you have any idea of, let's say, how much person... St. Lucian's possibly spend on gas, let's say per annum or per month or anything like that. I'm, I'm trying to figure out just how big of, how, how large a part in the economy that that, that plays. What I can tell you is that um, what the consumption level is on a, on a, on a probably on a macro level, um, I think right now it's somewhere in the region of about 1.1 million gallons of product is being consumed a month. Um, so that's, that's significant, um, which in retail price is about $18 million in fuel um, being spent. So that's, that's a big part of um, the, uh, the economy. Um, and it impacts so many other things, uh, the especially in the distribution of business. So when it goes up, the price of food goes up. Um, well, bus fares are beginning to show up. Um, that, that's interesting you, bring, you brought that up. I think a lot of people would un, want to understand why the price of gas affects other things like, like food prices. Because it's the cost of energy. I mean, to get things around the place, you need to mm -hmm. expend energy. And it's our major source of energy. Um, and that's why it, it, you know, the, it affects so many things. In the case of um, electricity, it has its implications there. The only thing is Lucilec has adopted an approach more from the point of view of trying to keep electricity prices stable have uh, locked themselves into agreement to buy fuel, diesel at a certain price for a period of time. Um, 
Sometimes it's actually more than the market price. Sometimes it could be less. But the more important thing for them is to have some stability in terms of um, electricity prices. Uh, do you find yourself in a situation where also people are buying less cooking gas as, as well as, I know they buy less fuel as well, but do people buy less cooking gas? Or is it well, this is a hard one because this is so basic that um, I don't think um, you would, I would say that um, people still have to buy, have to cook. Mm -hmm. And it's not something that, you know, is discretionary. <laughs> so uh, unlike having your car and say, okay, I'm not going to make that trip. It's, it's, a less, it's a little more difficult to say I'm not cooking. Mm -hmm. um, so it is, it is not as um, sensitive, I would say, to, to prices in terms of the consumption level as, say, fuel, um, gasoline, and diesel are. Right, because you could, I suppose, for, with regards to your fuel, you could carpool if you wanted to. Yeah. You, you have <laughs> options. Yeah. But, I mean, in the case of cooking gas, your options are few. Um, do I think there are people who... Um, I will talk about people going back to coal or something like that, which is this kind of, um, which is what you don't want um, to be burning um, wood. Um, but I would say cooking gas is less sensitive in terms of usage than gasoline and diesel. Because I, yeah. I have I have heard people make jokes about how they're possibly going to go back to coal if these <laughs> if these prices keep going up and up. Uh, but we're actually due for our second and final break, mm -hmm. so. Stay with us. We'll, have, we'll talk a little bit more in our final section. Okay. You're watching Issues and Answers, a production of the Government Information Service. Please stay tuned. We'll be back in a moment. What's in the food you're eating? Do you really even know? All the chemicals and hormones used to accelerate their growth. All the artificial flavoring, sweeteners and colors too. We consume and we don't spare a thought for the damage that they'll do. The that no, they do. think about the children. Think about the children. How will we save them? Chemicals and GMOs are not the solution. Use organic and Excessive agrochemical use, additives, and genetically modified foods are harmful to health and the environment. Join the good food revolution. Grow, buy, and consume organic. A message from Rice St. Lucia and the Ministry of Sustainable Development with funding from the GEF Small Grants Program, UNDP. The good food revolution. Welcome back. You're watching Issues and Answers, and we're talking gas prices with the Managing Director of Jamari and Sons, Mr. Everistus Jamari. Uh, I want to talk about government subsidies. How, how viable is that? Especially now, because we, we've obviously we've suffered from COVID. Mm -hmm. The government has been receiving less income. Uh, I guess we're sort of recovering now, but how, how viable an option is, is government subsidies? It is not something that's sustainable. Um, but I think in some cases, it may well be necessary. Um, Looking at the, the data that's um, available now, government has seemed to have adopted a policy of having a zero tax collection on all petroleum products. Um, and by this, I mean, while they are subsidizing cooking gas, the 20 pound cylinders of gas, um, at a dollar something a, a cylinder, um, there is also a slight subsidy of um, gasoline, which is about 44 cents a gallon, but they are collecting about a hundred, a dollar twenty-seven on diesel. Um, so you see, in some areas they are, it's, they're collecting; others they are not collecting. But I think the net effect, in terms of revenue loss and revenue gain, is zero. So diesel now seems to be more or less subsidizing cooking gas and um, gasoline. Um, so the government's position is a zero position where it's not forking out money to, to subsidize cooking gas and, and gasoline. And perhaps that's the fairest way, I think, approach one could take because the government cannot realistically go on forking out money to pay for people's um, fuel. The, the, I mean, just the energy intake and use. Because the, the effect of doing that, um, the negative effect of doing that is you are to shield people from the realities of... Um, economic life is to stop them from realizing 
that they need to adjust their way of spending. Uh, so uh, which is not what you want to do. Um, but you also recognize that some things are basic and affect people in a very serious way and you need to provide some cushioning. And cook and gas is a classic case um, where the government need to provide because it affects um, lower income people disproportionately. Mm -hmm. And that's why 20, 20 pound cylinder has been targeted specifically and not the 100 pound. Because the user of 100 pound invariably is a high income person mm -hmm. or is uh, a, business. a business owner. Right. Exactly. And they have means of counteracting these things. If you're a business, well, there's certain costs you need, you can change. Um, if you are, I mean, you're above average income person, well, you may be able to take you know, the additional cost. Mm -hmm. But this, the, the, the normal user of a 20 pound is probably at the lower end and therefore needs the assistance, which they are getting. Uh, do you think there is a space for both clean energy and oil to coexist? Um, they have to um, for us to see a foreseeable future. I mean, we talk about um, clean energy and doing away fossil fuels. That's not going to happen in our lifetime um, um, unless the technology really changes in a dramatic way um, because our whole infrastructure needs to change like overnight if we are to adjust and it's not going to happen. Um, I mean, the, the opportunities exist. I mean, the greatest impact could probably come from somewhere like Lucilec as a provider of, of energy. But even they, um, with, you know, you talk about um, solar panels and things like that. People talk about that as if it's some an easy solution. But the amount of land space these things take mm. in a small country, it's just not viable, quite honestly. That's to put it. up those farms, solar panel farms, that mm -hmm. takes a lot of land space mm -hmm. to produce electricity. And a lot of infrastructure. And, you know, I don't want to be cynical about this, but, I mean, these small islands don't contribute in any meaningful way that, that's, to climate change. That's the, the interesting thing. We're, um, <laughs> it's really the because we're small island developing states. No it's really the industrial kind of like the Correct. US, Europe, all it, that expel the largest amount of CO two into the atmosphere. Yeah. Yet it, yeah. it really because of climate change, it really affects us. And we are affected disproportionately by it. And for us to radically change our ways is like almost saying you're going to make no difference to it. Mm -hmm. So you have to ask the question: Are you going to disrupt you know our way of of, of life um, in the hope that things will change? Will contribute to improving the um, the world's um, position regarding the use of fossil fuels. Mm -hmm. But I, I think there's a moral obligation, having said that, mm -hmm. to kind of to get people to become a little more conscious of the way they use fossil fuels. Um, and hopefully the, the one day the, 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 the technology will be such that it might be a very feasible thing to move across. But as it stands now, no. It's, it's, it's interesting that you, you mentioned that, especially with regards to viability, because I, I've had this conversation with persons before that the technology, at least for electric cars in a country such as ours, we're a very, we're not Barbados, which has, mm -hmm. I get miles of, of flat road. We're, exactly. a, we're a hilly country. Mm -hmm. So it, it might be a little impractical for us, for everyone, at least in St. Lucia, yeah. to have electric vehicles. Yeah. And, um, and there's another dynamic that's yet, that's, it's take, that it will soon affect us. Um, places like the UK and other industrial countries have, have firm dates for, for the, to stop the production of vehicles using gasoline and diesel. Where do you think those vehicles are going to go? <laughs> <laughs> you remember the era when we had those Japanese just cars just being dumped here? Yeah, yeah. I think a similar thing would happen and I, I, where those vehicles would be cheap so cheap. Well. Yeah, but I'm saying those vehicles would be so cheap that the temptation to bring them in is going to be strong mm -hmm. um, because they're not going to produce in the UK anymore. Everybody's moving across to, to clean energy and these vehicles become very affordable and they don't want to be bangers, they'll be good vehicles. Um, so there is that as well. Um, I, I, don't, I just don't see it, but it's not a politically correct thing to say um, because everybody wants to be environmentally conscious, um, but that's the reality. Um, and I think we need to be honest with ourselves that solution is nowhere going to get across completely to clean energy. In the first, uh, in the um, so what do you think about the future of, of gas prices? Or what do you think is going to happen, I mean, in your opinion, down the line? Well, I mean, the forecast right now is that, um, if anything, it's going to go down. Um, and the reason for that is because of the uh, inflationary pressures around the world, 
Um, a lot of central banks now think that as a major issue and are going to take measures to, to slow down the, the, the rate of increase of, by increasing interest rates. Now, that will have the effect of slowing down the economy. And if you get a slowdown in the economy, then the demand for fewer energy goes drops. And of course, crude oil, crude, everything drops. And of course, the, the implications are refined products, prices will drop. So as we stand now, all the indications are that the, the, the trend globally is for the economy to begin to contract, global economy to contract, and for a reduction in the demand for energy as a consequence will lead to a reduction in the price of crude and related petroleum products. Okay, we're actually coming very close to the end of the program. Is there anything that you want to um, add or end with? Well, I mean, I suppose what people would want to, uh, what do we do in circumstances where these prices are becoming overwhelming? Um, and I, what I would say, I mean, for motorists is, you know, there are some basic things you can do. Um, running your car in AAC does consume more fuel. If you can avoid it, avoid it. Driving at very, at, um, at excessive speeds doesn't help. You use up more energy. Um, so, you know, be moderate in your, in your, in your driving. Um, look after the vehicle, ensure that it's well serviced because if it's in poor condition, it'll consume more energy than it needs to. And, and drive your car with the tires that are well inflated because if they're not well inflated, the, the traction now and the resistance on the road means that more energy needs to be um, um, consumed. So, and I mean, in the worst case, We'll share a car if you can share a car. <laughs> Carpool. <laughs> yes, yeah, that, yeah. That, that's actually really good advice. I might, I might end up doing that myself at some point. <laughs> as inconvenient as it may be sometimes too. I mean, you, so sometimes, you know, you'd rather be traveling on your own than, uh, because you know what can happen with that. Um, person wants to be dropped outside the door, you have to go off your route. Mm -hmm. So it's a cost probably. Well, you will have to share. <laughs> yeah, you just have to share the cost, that's all. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I want to thank you very much for coming on our program. I think you may have educated a lot of the public I hope so. on how these things affect your business, how they affect the rest of the country, how it affects the economy, food prices, supply chain, all that. So thank you very much for that little bit of education. Thank I hope we can have you on the program again at some point in the future. Anytime. <laughs> okay, thanks, Jack. No problem. You're watching Issues and Answers, a production of the Government Information Service. I'm your host, Jacques Hingston Compton, and you can watch this program as well as other government-funded programming on the National Television Network, on our social media channels, uh, Facebook and YouTube. Thanks for watching.